Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to debug an 80 mega 3 to 8 assembler program using the Atmel Studio IDE 7. Introduction. Now let's consider this program. I have discussed the details of this program in my previous video, that is video uh, 54. So if you have not watched that video, you may want to watch that video first uh, before looking at uh, watching this video. But let us briefly go through this program. So what we have here is the these bits that are in green, these are the comments. And these uh, few lines here, the first few lines, uh, dot include dot csec dot org, these are what we know call directives. And then we have the labels uh, here and here, and then the, uh, the instructions themselves. So um, the details of this program, as I mentioned a few moments ago, ago they are in video uh, 54. Debugging with Atmel Studio 7. So let's start uh, debugging the uh, program. Now, as mentioned earlier, we're going to use Atmel Studio 7 to debug the program. So I'm going to assume that you have downloaded and installed Atmel Studio 7. Uh, if you have not, you may want to just go to my previous video, that is video 53. Uh, that video will show you how to download Atmel Studio 7 and install it. So let's start uh, Atmel Studio 7. Hey, so once you start um, Atmel Studio 7, you will be presented with this screen. Now, uh, what you need to do is to create a new project. Now, there are two ways of doing this. Um, so the first method or first way is to click on File, go to New, and then select Project. The other way is to uh, click on this uh, part here where it says new project. So that's the second method or the second way. So I'm going to go ahead and go to file, new and project. Now, then you will be presented with this uh, box here what you need to do because we are uh, writing an assembler program so we highlight assembler and then here and then you need to in the name uh, down here where it is in the box where it says name you need to give it uh, a, a name to this particular uh, project so um, I'm going to just type in first assembler one word and um, that is pretty much a represent a good representation of what we're trying to do so this is our first assembler uh, uh, code with the add mega 3 to 8 so but you can choose any other name uh, it doesn't have to be first assembler all right so once you are happy with that Make sure the the uh, location that you want to store your code. Uh, I'm going to slightly modify this. Uh, you may have a different location, different folder. That's entirely up to you. Or you may use the browse button here to um, go find the location where you want to store your program. So when you are happy with this, you just click on uh, OK. Now, this uh, box will, will pop up. And if you notice at the top 
left hand corner it says device selection so now you need to select the device uh, that we're going to use now uh, as you can see there's a whole list of devices here um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this box here this search box here and type in three to eight as you can see, the, the list has been uh, somewhat reduced, which is a little bit more manageable. So I would select the Admega 328P. Now this is the actual device that is in, uh, installed on the Arduino Uno. All right, I have used in my previous video, Admega 328. Uh, actually, there's um, there's only a slight difference between the two, uh, but the dev the device that is installed on the Uno is the Admega three to eight P. Now, I would uh, explain the difference uh, between the three to eight and three to eight P in uh, my later videos. All right. So once we selected uh, the Admega three to eight P. We then go down to, to this corner here where it says OK, just click on OK. And it will then uh, present it, uh, this panel here. This panel here is the editor where you will punch in your or type in your program. Now, before you do that, um, it Sometimes it may prompt you for the tools that, uh, that where, the, where it says to, where it says uh, none on. Actually, this is where the tools uh, is. What th this does is actually it wants to know how you would like to run or execute your program. Now, there are, uh, if you go to this tool and then select debugger and programmer. Uh, you need to select simulator. All right, leave the rest alone. Don't uh, you don't need to worry too much about that. Then save it. Go to this uh, select uh, save icon. Sorry, save that, and then close it. All right. So now, as you can see, the the top few lines here. Uh, these are generate generated by the assembler. Now we need to place the code that we have been talking about here. All right, this is the default code. Uh, we don't want to use this. We want to use the code that we have been talking about. So let me just go find it first. Which is here. Uh, I'm going to like copy and paste. So copy, close this, go back here and then place this here, paste it and we have it. So we have the code in now, which is here. Uh, make sure uh, they, they are all properly aligned and then save it now having saved it what we need to do is go to the uh, build all right tap and click on that and then select build solution so click on build solution and you'll find in the uh, output message box here or panel you should uh, if there is nothing wrong with the code you you should see build one succeeded or update up to date zero failed zero skip so that's good so the build is successful so now we are re ready to debug the uh, program so what we need what we're going to do is we're going to go head to oh by the way here is the solution explorer panel and here is the uh, the main dot asm which is this part here all right so i'm not going to go into details of this so i'm going to go to build the uh, sorry on to debug click on debug and then select start debugging and break 
All right, so now um, the editor uh, panel, you see this yellow arrow and this first line of code being highlighted. And over this side, things have changed. Now you get the I.O. panel. And in the I.O. panel, you will see uh, different options. Um, let's not uh, concern ourselves with too many details here. So what I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this I.O. port B. Why is that? Because we are using uh, port B in our code. So if I click on that and you'll notice at the bottom here now we have uh, three uh, options. One is pin B, one is DDRB and port B. All right. So let's um, remember this part here. And then at the bottom here, we see uh, what we call the memory output. Uh, and the bottom here, we have all these tabs, output, window, immediate window, command window, break, call, and register. Now keep the register panel open, all right, because we will be uh, using the registers uh, in a few moments. And then here uh, is another panel which we are not going to uh, bother with. So we're going to leave this part here. Now let's go back to the editor panel where the uh, arrow is pointing. So place our cursor there. Now go back to debug. And uh, we're going to look at, if you go scroll, uh, scroll down, and you see this command here, step into, and that's F11, or step over, or step out. Now, we're going to focus on uh, F11, which is the step into. So, um, either you click on this to start debugging, or I'm going to use, uh, in my case, I'm going to use uh, F11. All right. so. Uh, let me get out this and so I'm going to make sure the cursor now is on this line here where the where the code is highlighted before you start start stepping now what step into uh, command do or the F11 do is to execute this program line by line all right so for me I have to hit my function key and then look for F11 and I'm going to press that and um, I've executed the first line. Now the first line of code says here, copy this value into R16. So if we move down to the register panel and look for R16, you notice that it's highlighted 0xff. So that value 0xff is now been copied into register R16. Notice R17 is 0x00, which is clear. Now I'm um, go back to this uh, code here in the uh, editor panel. Make sure the cursor is on the same line. Then press F11. Watch R17 in the panel here. Now it's R17 now is highlighted and it's got 0x01. All right. Now the next step part, it says out DDRB comma R16. So what that is going to do is to copy the contents of R16, which is FF in binary that will be all ones and copy that value to DDRB. Now watch DDRB here. Watch this uh, on the IO panel. The, watch the DRB when I execute. So I'm going to do a function 11, uh, F11. Notice that DDRB now has the value 0 uh, FF. Where did this come from? This come from the contents of R16. So now we've got uh, all the bits in DDRB set to ones because FF in binaries, binary is all ones. All right. Now, here we're going to do the next line is going to output the contents of R17 to port B. So watch out for port B here. 
But before we do that, let's look at R17 here. We have 0x1 in R17. So go back here and uh, step F11. Notice now port B has got 0, uh, zero 1 hexa. And notice the least significant bit is littered up. All right, so, and then here, uh, we we'll come to this part. Uh, remember, this is the jump uh, to end, which is itself here. So it's going to stay here all the time if I keep executing him. All right, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay here. And so that's it for this particular demonstration. So let me just uh, stop the debug session and that's it for this demonstration. Well, we have come to an end uh, to this video and in the next video I'm going to show you how to download uh, the program to the Arduino Uno using Atmel Studio 7. So thank you for watching. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye.